Does taking on a supportive role and being the team's healer imbued with the power of life itself sound fun to you? Maybe you enjoy the larger emphasis on strategy and decision making over raw mechanics that's inherent to medic. Or do you just want to play the most important and influential class in the game for those easy wins? Perhaps you've lost a few too many matches when nobody on your team would switch to medic and finally decided enough was enough. Whatever your reasoning, this video will get you saving lives and collecting wins in no time. As TF2's sole healing class, Medic's impact on matches is ludicrously high, and the team with the better Medic or Medics will always be at a significant advantage. He was designed to be overpowered in order to keep up with 5 or 6 damage classes single-handedly. In any routine game of Medic, it's possible to heal as much health as the 2 or 3 highest output players on the enemy team combined. Now some of that healing will undoubtedly be overheal that will decay, but the point still stands. So where does all this power come from? Well, as with all classes, Medic has primary, secondary, and melee weapon options. However, unlike most other classes, his secondaries are by far his most important items and what you will be using 95 plus percent of the time when playing Medic. These four metaguns are arguably the most powerful weapons in all of Team Fortress 2. All of them function similarly enough mechanically. Left-clicking an ally will attach your meta beam to them and begin restoring their health over time. The amount of health they receive increases the longer they have gone without taking damage, a mechanic often Often called critical heals or just crit heals. The meta beam will stay attached until you move out of range or detach it yourself, regardless of which direction you face or where you look. Because of this feature, your head should be on a swivel when playing medic, always scanning your environment for potential threats to your existence. One of the most common mistakes beginning medics make is just standing there watching your patient as you heal them. Spies, flanking scouts, and bombing soldiers can come out of nowhere, so keep your eyes peeled and keep your awareness high. Great awareness is a cornerstone of playing medic well because in any given situation your priorities are first and foremost staying alive if you're dead you can't heal anyone so try not to die a medic should always aim for zero deaths in every game they play unlike other classes there is basically never a situation where it is smart to sack yourself as medic zero deaths may be a bit unrealistic because staying alive isn't always an easy task medic is designed to be at a heavy disadvantage in 1v1s against every single other class in the game your strength comes from how you bolster up teammates, not how well you can fight and kill enemies. Because of this, you should try to always have a few friendly players near you so they can do the fighting and you, in turn, can keep them fighting by supplying health. Entering combat yourself should only be done as a last resort when an enemy is trying to kill you and you have nobody nearby to help out. I cannot stress this point enough. At no point when playing Medic should you ever be looking to fight an enemy. Luckily, Medic does have a few advantages over other classes to help him survive when you are inevitably caught out. He is tied for the second fastest class in the game next to Spy, which means as long as you aren't finding a scout, turning tail and running away to find a teammate is a valid option. Medic is also the only class with passive health regeneration, letting him shrug off chip damage over time without needing a second medic or health packs to heal him up. However, the best way to stay alive is to position yourself in such a way that enemies are just unable to fight and kill you in the first place. Excellent positioning is a skill built up slowly slowly over time through experience and map knowledge, but I do have a few tips to jumpstart your learning. Know that the metagun's beam range is longer than you think, and the range at which it detaches is a bit longer than the range at which it connects. Always keep a fair distance between you and both your patient and other teammates so you don't take residual splash damage if they eat a pipe or rocket. Stay clear of chokes and sniper sight lines. As a medic, you rarely need to see the enemy team to do your job. And if you can't see the enemies, chances are they can't see and damage you either. Always be moving. Even if you think you're safe behind your team, you never know when a sniper may peek aggressively or a soldier will come rocket jumping in. Don't give them an easy first shot. There are going to be times when you are taken by surprise, or the enemy team pushes in with an uber charge, or you think you have teammates close by only for them to get headshot, get crit, or straight up jump away and leave you. It is only in these scenarios where getting your hands a little dirty and fighting an enemy to the death could be the only option left to survive. Know that even if you win the 1v1 and live, you have likely made a mistake by needing to fight an enemy in the first place, so think about your positioning for the future. Your second priority is healing up your team and keeping them 
them in the fight. You will mainly do this with whatever metagun you have equipped. Oftentimes, there will be multiple players at low health that require your attention. In these situations, you want to focus heals on whoever is actively fighting or taking damage. After that, prioritize these classes, especially your demo man. They usually serve as the team's front line. Letting them die will assuredly compromise your positioning. Even if all your surrounding teammates are full health, that doesn't mean your job is done. The metagun has the unique ability to overheal or buff players to 1.5 times their standard maximum health value. Full overheals give players a massive health advantage in any engagement they take, so try to buff as many teammates as possible when a fight isn't occurring. I usually make sure to fully buff any teammate with crit heals available to them before moving on to players that have recently taken damage just to make my healing a bit more efficient. Healing and buffing your team with the metagun already puts them at a significant advantage, but it also helps you with the third most crucial aspect of playing medic after staying alive and healing, building and utilizing your uber charge. Whenever you have the meta beam attached to a player, your uber charge meter will begin filling up slowly. The rate at which it fills depends on a few factors. First and foremost, which metagun you're using. Some have positives that let you charge faster, while others have negatives that decrease your build rate. You should also know that healing an ally that is already full overheal or another medic is currently healing will cut your build rate to 50%, doubling the time it takes to charge an uber. Valve added this mechanic to incentivize medics to spread heals out amongst their teammates rather than only heal a single player or pocket them as it's commonly called. So spread your heals around because it will help you build uber charge faster. And building uber charge faster is super critical because of just how influential they can be. Before we get into what uber charges actually do, know that dying at any percent will reset you to 0% charge when you respawn, not to mention the time that you now can't be building because you are dead. This is the primary reason why staying alive is much more important on medic than any other class. Less deaths not only means more healing, but more uber charges. Because of this, it is always better to use your uber rather than die at 100% or drop it. These panic pops, as they're often called, are preferred to a drop even if you have trouble capitalizing on the charge because you can immediately start building again and healing up your team rather than leaving them out to dry during your respawn time. So what does this coveted uber charge do that you speak of? Well, right-clicking at 100% charge, or 25% for the vaccinator, will activate your metagun's uber charge effect for 8 seconds, or 2.5 seconds if you're using the vaccinator. The effect of the charge is where the primary differences between the four metaguns lie, although they do all share one commonality. All uber charges are extremely powerful and often the driving force in a large-scale team fight. Their effects range from 300% healing, triple damage for your patient, 75% damage reduction, or even complete invulnerability for 8 seconds. If you're really new, I highly recommend either sticking with stock or using the quick fix. The Vaccinator and Critscreek are great, but they are a bit less forgiving than the latter two options. So once you reach that magical 100%, you can begin looking for a prime, juicy moment to use your uber charge. With stock, it is best used to prevent upfront damage and start a large team push, not save a low health retreating ally. You always want to be pushing into and forcing back the enemies during a charge, making space for the rest of your team to follow up, learning when the best moment to pop and use your uber charge is one of those skills that is just going to take some time and experience to develop. But when you're just starting off, make sure your patient is loaded up on ammo and these classes are always a safe bet to pop on. Also, if a teammate in choke is repeatedly calling for medic at near or full health, they are likely asking for your uber. If you think they're correct in their assessment that it's a good time to uber, pop on them and get involved. Switching off your metagun to either your primary or melee weapon means you aren't building uber as fast as you possibly could, meaning it will increase the time it takes to build uber charge, thus increasing the probability you die before reaching 100% and popping. This is why you should be making heavy use of your metagun. Put some miles on that thing. And since you will be using your metagun almost exclusively, your primary and melee weapon choice doesn't matter too much at this stage in your journey. But if you have them, please just equip the Crusader's Crossbow and the Ubersaw or Solemn Vow. The overdose can also be a good time on Quick Fix if you're feeling a little saucy. Playing medic actually is that simple at a surface level. Your overall goals don't change much from situation to situation. You try not to die, you heal teammates, you build and use uber and finally maybe fight enemies if it's the only way to save yourself from death there are just a few more things you should know though when you first start playing medic you are going to die you are going to die a lot much of the time it will be your fault a dropped uber a misplaced
position, entering a sniper sightline, stabbed in the back because you didn't turn around. Other times your teammates are going to beef hard or just straight up leave you out to dry. They will steal your health packs and watch as you cook to death from afterburn. You are going to Uber a teammate only for him to sit back and sightsee. But as you play, you will grow your knowledge about both medic and the other classes, letting you make more nuanced and informed decisions. Mechanics do matter on medic as they always matter in a first person shooter, but they are overall less important than some okay, classes man. and your mechanics will naturally improve as you play. But with this growth and improved decision making comes one of the most rewarding feelings of progression in any multiplayer game that I've ever played. There's just something different about popping off with medic that isn't replicated by any other class. I really think it's due to medic's almost complete reliance on decision making and how you can turn lead free to plays into golden fraggers with enough feed. I never get tired of gassing up a player and watching them take out enemies that are assuredly more skilled than they are. Finally, as you begin your medical journey, you are likely to run into teammates that try to control and micro your play. They'll complain if they aren't receiving enough heals. They'll flame if you die or drop an Uber. They'll ask you to pocket them exclusively. Hear me now. They likely have no idea what they're talking about and are simply coping with their own mistakes. Take everything they say with a grain of salt. Instead of listening to them, simply listen to me. So hit that subscribe button because this video is only the first of my complete and systematic breakdown of TF2's best class, where I'll be covering everything medic from the most basic ideas to insanely niche mechanics. And while the knowledge in these videos is useful, you can't get better without playing. So most importantly, get out there and start saving lives. Your demo man needs you. Now go kill them, you dumbass. Why did you go this way and not through main? And then he just fucking leaves? Hey, dude! What the fuck are these players? It's a fucking psychological test, dude. I swear to God. These can't be human beings. <laughs> they have no humanity. <laughs> hey, Uber. The TF2 payload experiment. <laughs>